Hi, it's Stefan in Sofia, Bulgaria, and today I'm going to take you on a virtual tour in the most precious part of the National Archaeological Museum in Sofia, the so-called treasury, or that's the place where the most famous uh, findings from the Thracian period in Bulgaria could be seen. Actually, when we are entering there, uh, it's a good question to ask who are the Thracians? Unfortunately, we do not know much. Why? Because Thracians didn't have their own alphabet. So most of the sources that we have, they are from the Greek period and the Roman period. And as you can imagine, the Greeks and the Romans, they were not much in favor of the Thracians. So based on what the Greek and the Roman historians wrote, and the archaeological findings, we can have a broader picture of the life of the Thracians, of the Thracian civilizations. Actually, who are the Thracians? Uh, the Thracians were population who lived in the Balkan Peninsula, uh, mostly in present-day Bulgaria, Macedonia, uh, northern Greece and the European part of Turkey. Uh, what we know is that the Thracians could be seen on the map from around the early 2nd millennia BC. And how do we know that? We know it by one honorable mention from uh, the most famous writer in ancient Greeks, Homer. In his Iliad, he mentioned that the Thracian king arrived to help the Trojans in their fight against the Greeks with beautiful horses, wine, and gold. And part of this gold described there could be seen in our National Archaeological Museum. According to Herodotus, Thracians were the second most numerous people in uh, antiquity, after the Indians, but they never managed to get unified. Actually, the best they did was between 6th and 3rd century BC, when one of the numerous Thracian tribes, Udrisi tribe, managed to have a stable state in what is nowadays Bulgaria. Uh, what happened next? First century BC is the invasion of the Romans and then after almost 150 years of resistance the Thracians were conquered and included in the Roman Empire. And pretty much at that time we can say uh, it is the most famous Thracian, Spartacus, the one who led the very famous slave rebellion against the Romans. He was born in the Thracian lands near the Rudopi mountains. Slowly, the Thracians, after they were conquered by the Romans, uh, they were gone as, a, as an ethnic group. And pretty much the final blow on them was the arrival of different uh, barbaric tribes uh, as a result of the great migration of the peoples between 4th and 6th century AD. And as a result, the Thracians were no more an ethnic group there. So a few words about what is exhibited uh, here. Uh, firstly, we have one very interesting um, finding, the so-called uh, uh, Trebeniste treasure, nowadays in Macedonia. Actually, these are different funeral gifts, uh, pretty much related to the life of, and, uh, of the Thracians. We have helmets, goblets, uh, uh, different applications for clothing, for 
quartzes made of gold, bronze, silver, etc. What is interesting for this treasure is actually the fact that nowadays it is exhibited in three national museums in three different countries, in Bulgaria, Serbia and North Macedonia. Actually among the interesting uh, findings here are this gold mask and gold hand with a ring, uh, different uh, pieces of armament like the helmets here, uh, interesting uh, uh, vessels for water like this crater with these handles in the form of volutes or uh, different creatures from the Greek mythology. And actually, when we talk about these gifts, uh, it is interesting to know that Thracians celebrated death. They believed in life after death. They believed in the immortality of soul. Uh, this is the reason why they all would organize great festivities when someone died. Of course, if it was uh, someone important, a priest or king or nobleman, chieftain, etc. But the fact, the interesting fact is that most of these findings, they were found in different graves. Uh, some of them real masterpieces of jewelry those that you can see around. And thus some would say that even Thracians would be, let's say, unhappy if someone was born because they believe that only uh, bad moments would happen here on Earth. The other important uh, type of findings are those treasures which were found in the middle of a field or by... Uh, villagers uh, taking care of uh, their gardens. One of the most uh, famous is what you can see here. This is the Vulcitron treasure from the end of the second, early first millennia BC. What we have there is pretty much in different groups. You can see these elements here, more or less they look like lids, some would say they are used as symbols, those musical instruments, but what's the real uh, deal, we are not exactly sure. The same is the story with this tripartite uh, goat piece. Some would say that it was used to make mixtures, for example, the very famous Medovina, it's a mixture of wine, honey and water. I don't say that special herbs would be used uh, uh, here. Uh, they would be lit and then they would be smoked through this type of a pipe. Huh? Sounds interesting, but who knows? Of course, interesting are those uh, jugs on the top, which are related to the wine drinking, because for Thracians, Drinking wine was an important part of their everyday life. Unlike the Greeks, they would drink the wine in a very solid way. They would never add water into the wine. Sometimes even with the skins and the seeds, as the Greeks would say. If that was the case, let's see. But before getting there, remember the mask that I showed you earlier? Similar to the masks of... Agamemnon in Mycenae, the masks of Philip II of Macedon, who was the father of Alexander the Great. But here, another type of mask was discovered. The mask of the Thracian king Teres, who lived in 65th century BC. Actually, this mask, this gold mask, is made of solid gold, almost 700 pure gold. What is interesting here is that this mask is actually not just a thin gold leaf as the other ones, but it's a solid one. It has a high profile and according to Dr. Kitu, 
the archaeologist who is behind those findings, this mask was used also as a cup to drink wine. You'd pour the wine or you. It is you if you're the king, because this is the king's mask. You'd pour the wine, start drinking the wine, and when you finish drinking the wine, you would put the mask on your face. Why? Because the kings in ancient Thrace, they had the so-called anthropodemonic character, which means how God, how human. They would start the celebrations as a human. And when the celebration is going to over, to finish, they would put the gold mask on their face and thus will end it as a god. Very typical for the Thracian understanding of the world. When we are talking about this uh, our royal insignia, of course, some of the findings are related to crowns or type of crowns. This is what you can see here. This is a gold, uh, gold wreath with um, uh, typically oak leaves. Uh, probably the most famous one found uh, uh, near the town of Kazanuak and nowadays exhibited there, uh, a symbol of the royal power. At the same time, when we were talking about drinking wine, you can see some of the very typical uh, jugs for drinking wine, the so-called fiale, typically made of silver or gold, those small cups that you drink wine from, and those goblet-like goblet -like, uh, vessels, typically in the form, in the shape of an animal hat. It could be a ram, it could be a deer, whatever, those noble uh, creatures. But sometimes at the very bottom here and here, they would have a small hose. So they more or less would be used to strain, to drain the wine and thus separate the liquid from skins and seeds. Because as we mentioned, the Thracian wine was very, very thick. At the same time, interesting findings are also related to one of the animals of the horses. So here, what we can see, um, let me have a better look. What you can see, these are different appliques from the so-called treasure from Lukovic. Uh, there you can see silver and gold mostly used as decoration for the horse uh, harnesses. Some of them are three-dimensional under the uh, head of a griffin, like those ones. Others, they are uh, pretty much related to the initiation process of a prince who would become a king, hunting. This is what you can see here. And why we have so many, like this one here, to point out different silver appliques again for horses. Uh, why we have so many of those found in uh, the graves and the tombs of the Thracians? Because, as I mentioned, Thracians believed in life after death, in the immortality of soul, and they needed all those elements to be with them. Uh, the horse was the most venerated animal for the Thracians. This is the reason why in almost every single Thracian tomb, a horse skeleton, sometimes two, sometimes even four, were found in order to accompany their owner in life after death. That's why we have this type of decoration and application. But probably one of the most interesting findings is this hat. This hat uh, is dated back to the end of 4th century BC, pretty much the time of Alexander the Great. Uh, it was found in front of one of the Thracian tombs, the Thracian tomb of Kosmatka, where King Seltos III was buried. It is believed that it is him presented on this bronze head. Actually, in the world, from this period, from the uh, Hellenistic period, we have only one similar head, the so-called philosopher's hat from Antikythera in Greece, 
which unfortunately was found under the sea waters and it was very damaged. This one is preserved perfectly. Uh, we can see the personal traits of the person, the special type of the nose, the haircut, the beard. Also, when you come close here, right here, you can see a small mole. On the other cheek, you can see a scar from a battle, most probably from a battle. Thus, turning this into a real masterpiece. A few years ago, when we had the let me have a look from here, when we had the exhibit of the Thracian treasures in uh, Louvre in France, this hat head of King Siltus III was the single most expensive part of the treasure. Uh, actually, the insurance value was at 10 million euro. Quite an expensive hat, right? But already 4th century, this is the time, the time of the downfall of the Thracians. In a few centuries from this period, the Thracians will be conquered by the Romans. So from that moment on, most of the findings were already influenced by the Romans, like this gold jewelry here, necklaces, uh, rings, uh, uh, the jigsaw on, uh, on the top, and thus slowly, as I mentioned, uh, Thracians being lost. But what deserves a shot is again some ornaments this time for not only for horses but also for chariots decoration of chariots and here it is mostly time to say that in bulgarian lands we have a really great collection of chariots from the early period of the roman empire pretty much between first and third century uh, a.d most of it, it is related to the fact that still the Thracian beliefs were alive. So this is the reason why the Thracian nobility, influenced by the Romans, but still followed their own burial traditions. And that's why we have these valuable artifacts presented here. And from 4th century AD, already there are only a few words about Thracians. Thracians, as I mentioned, are going to disappear from the ethnic map of Europe. So that, just in a few centuries later, in late 7th century AD, the local population, pretty much in the core Thracians, would be one of the main ethnic groups, together with the Slavs and the Bulgars, to create the medieval Bulgarian state. Having said that, our next stop will be at the medieval section of the museum. And till we get there, I hope you enjoyed the video and see you down the road. Thank you.